Good morning everyone, I am Mr. Is. Let's gear up here for a very interesting video and I thank you for joining me for this video. We will develop a parametric equation or a set of parametric equations to describe the involute of a circle and some of you may know what that is, involute of a circle and some of you may not. If you have an XY plane and you have right here what could be a tightly wound thread around a spool everything with a circular cross section you make a little cut into that thread and then you start unwinding it from the tip of that thread imagine you have a, a pencil attached then you start tracing it curve a curve opens up and it develops like this as that thread unwinds around this the thread always being kept in a very tight and taut manner so that it's fully stretched out as a curve is made this right here is called an involute of a circle and you can develop parametric equations to describe any point on this involute. When you develop those equations, the variables x, y, and theta will come about. The theta will be our parameter. You'll also see the radius, but that's more of a constant. You also have to remember s is equal to r theta, the formula for an arc length determination, because that comes into play. The best way to proceed over here is to view everything here with regards to pre-calculus, so we keep it more manageable, and that's the goal over here. We don't need to make it unnecessarily complex, and I won't. And I'm making this part dotted over here for a particular reason. I have a unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, radius here is equal to r. I made a little cut over here, and now I'm tracing the curve as I pull the thread and I start tracing it, and I end up to this point right over here, where I have traced that much of a curve. I have an origin over here, I have a point here on my unit circle and I have a point over here. This point over here represents the tip of that thread that has been pulled out from which the tracing is occurring and that involute will develop. I want to develop a set of points here A, B and C. A represents your origin, B you know what it represents, a point on your unit circle. At all instances the point on your unit circle here point B will always have an X and a Y value which you know by means of right triangle trigonometry you know how to do this. You have r cosine theta and r sine theta. You can develop a right triangle in a unit circle with a specific point here and then you can determine the x, y values based on the angle over here. You'll have r cosine theta and r sine theta. That's basic stuff over there and you know it. When we want to develop the parametric equations for this involute of this circle, what are we looking at? We're looking here at this point because this point C will be any point here on that involute as it develops that point C will have a certain X and a Y value which has to be determined. And the parametric equations will very well represent these values. But how can you get to that point? If you think about everything with regards to a certain distance from the origin in terms of the X components and the Y components, you can think of that as a framework. Think about it from A to B, from the origin to this unit circle, we have a certain X dimension, we have a certain Y dimension. From this point B to C, we have a certain X dimension away and a certain Y dimension away. And that's what I'm talking about. The point C can represent with regards to this, what I'm showing you over here, a certain B values X and a certain X prime, which I'll talk about, B values Y and a certain Y prime units away. This will here represent what will eventually be your point C's X value. This here will represent what will eventually be your point C's Y value. Point C again is a point on your involute. Point B in all instances is on your unit circle. What am I talking about here? You know what B, X and B, Y are. That's your X coordinate of your point B, which is R cosine theta. B, Y here is your Y coordinate of your R sine theta. But we have to look at what's this X prime, what's Y prime. X prime and Y prime will represent the X units the way you are from the unit circle to that point. And Y prime will be the amount of vertical direction or the Y units the way you are from point B's Y value to point C's Y value. When I start showing you the items that will fill in, all of that will make sense. But how can we go about determining these x prime y prime values because they're the most important we will talk about it when you're looking here at this segment a b what is a b here representing it's representing the radius of your unit circle when you look at this segment b c what does that represent it represents exactly this original arc here which has been cut and stretched out it represents and i'm going to call this point o it represents the arc BO which represents your arc length which is R theta. Think about it. This dotted line here is no different than this line except when I cut the circle and I stretched it out I have a segment versus an arc but their lengths are the same and it's R theta. Point C will be your point on your involute circle. 
I have created here a certain angle which is theta. I need to look at this little triangle which pops up over here and I'll show you what that is. I'm gonna blow it up for you. It looks something like this. And this, you know, continues on as my y-axis. This here is my origin, point A, point B, and then no necessary point here. I'm not worrying about that, but I have a right triangle. I know this right here is a dimension which happens to be R. This here happens to be part of something which would have continued on to point C. All of this being your R theta. How can I determine what this angle is because I need it? I know from here to here, this line, it was theta, but I know from your x-axis to your y-axis, you have a 90 degrees. Therefore, the difference of the two is theta minus 90, and that right there is your angle right here. Theta minus 90, it's very important because it'll come into play. Now, how will I start determining these components here? Think about it. Stretch a line out from here and then take it up over here. You've generated a right triangle which has a certain x prime and a certain y prime dimension. Y prime, x prime, that's exactly what that is. But to determine the x prime and the y prime values, I need to know what this angle here is. And I'll show you how that angle can be determined. Look at this triangle. I'll draw it out for you again over here. It looks something like this. I have a 90 degrees, I have a A, I have a B. This continues on here to point C and then I've developed something which looks like this. This right here represents my y prime, this represents my x prime, I need them. I know what this angle is, but I need to know what this angle is, because this angle will help me determine x prime and y prime. I already know what the hypotenuse here is BC. Hypotenuse in all instances is R theta. I figured out this angle to be theta minus 90 and I'll tell you that this angle is, is exactly the same and I'll show you why. The manner by which I'll show you is just like a quick exercise, we'll prove it for you right over here and then once we have this angle determined, it's home sweet home from there. If you look at this triangle right here, you have a certain angle which is theta minus 90, you have a certain angle here which is a 90 degrees, we have a certain angle here which we don't know, we'll call that x, all of these should equal 180. This cancels out with that. I have here solving for x is equal to 180 minus theta. Since I've determined this to be 180 minus theta, I'm looking at this value right over here, and this right here is 180 minus theta. Now I focus entirely on the small triangle, which looks something like this. This small triangle is part of a larger triangle. You have two similar right triangles. Anyhow, you have a small and a large. You have determined this angle, we're looking for this angle right here, and we've determined this angle, it's 180 minus theta, we have a 90 degrees. How can we determine this? X plus that 90 plus 180 minus theta is equal to 180. All the triangles have a total internal angle of 180. This cancels out with this, you solve for X, X is equal to, you'll have theta minus 90, which is exactly what I was saying that this right here would be equal to that and now we are good. What I have done is totally eliminated all of that and now we can focus exactly on this. We have point B, we have a right triangle, we have point C, we're looking for this Y prime and X prime dimensions right here. We've determined this angle here to be theta minus 90. With regards to this angle, we can determine the values. Cosine of that angle theta minus 90 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is R theta. BC in all instances R theta. Sine with regards to that angle is equal to Y prime over R theta and X prime is equal to R theta times cosine theta minus 90. I'm not worrying about that right now. Y prime is equal to R theta times sine of this. We have a cosine difference formula, we have a sine difference formula which we need to work out and we will. We'll work it out and we'll open it up. When you're taking this R theta on the other side it combines with this difference here which has to be calculated. We'll have a cosine theta cosine 90 plus sine theta sine 90. Now let's do the same thing here. R theta when on the other side it combines with the sine difference formula trigonometric identity we have to be aware of. We have a sine theta cosine 90. I'm keeping everything here in degrees. I never brought the radians in pi over 2. There's no need. You can simplify your work and just keep everything here with regards to degrees. Then I'll have here a minus sine 90 and cosine theta. Wherever I have cosine 90, it zeroes it out. So all of this zeroes out, all of this zeroes out. Wherever I have a sine 90, I have a one over there. And I might as well just erase it because sine 90 is always equal to one. Here sine 90 is equal to one, I'm erasing it. What remains here in terms of x prime and y prime is exactly here in the top and this with a minus on the bottom which we can now marry together and rewrite everything properly. I have determined now from here x prime is equal to r theta sine theta. 
I have determined y prime is equal to r theta and a minus cosine theta, but why don't I bring the minus right here at the very beginning? Minus r theta cosine theta. You see how everything came about, right? We were looking at a certain distance from A to C by means of B. With regards to point B on your unit circle, you had these in terms of your X and your Y values. And then from here to C, we're certain X prime units away and a certain Y prime units away, which eventually gives you how much away you are from the origin with regards to C. And that gives you an indication right here of what you're dealing with with regards to the X and the Y values of this point C on your involute. We've determined all of this. Now let's combine these values together and that will give us our parametric equations. I don't need to show you any of this anymore because you know how this came about. I'll erase it. For the point C, the x value is equal to what? Bx plus that. What's the Bx? It's r cosine theta, the x value of your unit circle plus x prime, which is this r theta sine theta. For your point C, the y value is equal to the y value coming out from your unit circle r sine theta the coordinate part of that plus the y prime which you just calculated which is a minus r theta cosine theta but that minus converts this into a minus r theta cosine theta you can rewrite all of these with regards to parametric equations by isolating the r for the x i have right here cosine theta plus theta sine theta for the y here i have a r and then i'll have a sine theta minus theta cosine theta these right here will represent your parametric equations. This right here and this right here, indicating the x and the y coordinates of this point C. Because you know point C will have a certain x and a certain y value. That's exactly what this is. And these are parametric equations which define those points. If they define a point on your involute, then that set of equations defines your involute of that circle in terms of the curve representation and the exercise has been completed and that's all i wanted to show you in this video how everything came about this little angle here theta minus 90 was very crucial because theta minus 90 came into that trigonometric identity in terms of the cosine and the sine difference formulae that you saw play into everything you have to look at everything here with regards to right triangles and determine this angle theta minus 90 you had a certain dimension here radius you had a certain dimension here r theta which was your arc length stretched out into a straight line and everything else has been made clear for you the involute of a circle and its parametric equations and finally keep in mind x y and theta are the variables theta is your parameter r over here serves as nothing other than a constant thank you for watching have a good day